Hello and welcome to today's video. I recently took a solo trip to Moab, Utah. And since I'm from Utah, visiting Moab is always an exciting trip for me. And even though I've seen the beautiful red rock and arches in Moab many times, this was my first time capturing this place on film. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some of my favorite images from this trip. The sun has been setting at like 4 p.m. lately. And so by the time that I got to my hotel, the sun had already set. So I decided to try and do some nighttime photography. And I actually tried my very first roll of Cinestill 800T. It's really dark right now. So I'm hoping some long exposures can kind of compensate for that. I wish I had a slightly wider lens here. I'm still gonna try it. We'll see how it goes. Oh my gosh, it's so much better now that he moved. I'm gonna have to go like right up to the edge of the road. All right, we're gonna go half a stop over expose. Oh my gosh, this car's gonna park right there. No! <sighs> I think that's my cue to leave. Oh, you're fine. No, you can stay. Oh, I feel so bad. Just this very pleasant older couple just rolled down the window. And they're like, I'm sorry. And um, I'm certain they heard me uh, yell no. No. <laughs> oh, I'm a monster. Honestly, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna try somewhere else. Kidding me? And since this is my first roll of Cinestill, I'm not sure if I'm super into the halation look. I think it has its place, but wow, is it so red. I mean, these lights look radioactive. Not sure if I love that yet, but uh, again, my first roll, so we'll see. The next day, I went ahead and visited Arches National Park. You have a park pass or stand at it? Uh, I'm just going to As I pulled up to the next spot, I saw these rock climbers right next to me, and I actually love to rock climb myself. So I could see all their gear and I kind of knew what they were doing and I thought that would be an interesting subject to photograph. And as someone who photographed in the outdoor retail space quite a bit, this subject matter is pretty fun to me. So I thought about talking to them, but I chickened out, so I only got a few of them. And with that, at the first location, called the North and South Windows, I took out my Olympus 35RC and walked around while taking some 35mm shots.
And here I took a shot of this double archway and there were small crowds of people just kind of walking underneath, taking some photos. And some people would climb up just a bit into this little area. I love including people in my photographs. It really gives a sense of scale and magnitude. It really helps you visualize in real life what it could have been like to be there. And as the day continued, it was the mid afternoon. The sun was just beaming down. And I honestly was really struggling with the lighting. I felt like everywhere I looked, there was something interesting to photograph with this intense, strong, contrasty light. You know, against my better judgment, I'm shooting in broad daylight. And uh, that makes me wish I brought some black and white. And yeah, I think I'm really underestimating the potential that black and white film has. I typically don't shoot very much black and white, even though the main feature of this whole area are the red rocks, I still think that black and white would have actually outshined color in this scenario. During this really awkward phase of noon light, I think I'll start shooting black and white more. I don't know, do you agree? What do you think? So this was a four day trip to Arches National Park and it's actually a fairly large park. And since I had such a long amount of time there, I was able to explore some areas of the park that I've actually never visited. So this trip was really special to me because I got to see some new things. And since I was on this trip solo, I got to wander wherever I wanted to as I pleased. And again, because this is such a weird, awkward time to go to this national park, you know, somewhat in the winter, it was actually not crowded at all. I kind of hit this sweet spot where there wasn't any snow on the ground, but there weren't very many people at all. So it was kind of nice and quiet for the most part. <laughs> so I still had a couple hours before sunset and I wanted to time it so that I would visit Delicate Arch, you know, definitely the most famous arch in Utah. And I went down below into a lower viewing area. And to be honest, I didn't even know that existed. So I got to see the arch from the backside, something that I hadn't seen before. As we continued throughout the day, I went to the Delicate Arch parking lot, and from there, it's about a 50 minute hike to the actual arch itself. So I tried to time everything perfectly so that it would be sunset as I arrived. And with spending so much time in one location with really one major subject, it really challenged me because I'm photographing the same thing. So even though most of these images are more or less the same thing, but in different fonts, <laughs> I was trying to see what else I could do to really bring out what it feels like to visit Delicate Arch. With some images with no people at all, some even embracing the fact that there are crowds all looking at and photographing the same thing. And you'll see this later on in some of the images too, but sometimes I find the people looking at a subject more interesting than the subject. Since I had spent so much time in this one area, I feel like I was really able to experience a huge variety of lighting as the sun was dipping. Every few minutes, it would change pretty rapidly. And in general, in photography, I think that's actually a really interesting concept that if you ever think you're getting bored of a subject, go there at a different time or even a different season and you'd be surprised the results you're able to make. As the sun was completely setting, I was planning on staying and getting some cool nighttime photography shots. After the sun had completely disappeared, I stayed for about an hour and you still couldn't really see the stars. And I was just so cold and miserable and hungry. I just packed up, called it a day. And on top of that, I still have to walk the 50 minute hike back to my car and then the 20 minute ride back to the hotel. So yeah, I. I was done. <laughs> the next day, I actually wandered around the hotel for a bit and found their pool. Of course, it's dead of winter, so no one's using it. And I thought that would be a fun subject to have this pool area all to myself. So I went ahead and took some photos there too. Here is one of my favorites from this little pool session. And here I just love the symmetry. The symmetry of the chairs, the windows, the leading lines, everything just feels perfectly placed. Even this shadow, barely not touching the windows above. Yeah, definitely one of my favorites. And here, this one's not terribly special, but I did love photographing through this window. And I think that's something that I'm gonna start doing more often is trying to look for frames within frames.
As the day continued, I was planning my next location completely around sunset, and just on the opposite side of the road from Arches National Park is Dead Horse Point, which is another state park and beautiful, incredible location, one of my favorites to visit. So as I entered the park, I actually forgot where I was going, and I pulled up to the visitor center expecting a different view. I had gotten there a tiny bit later than I was expecting, and so I thought the sun would just completely disappear. Anyway, so I grabbed some shots and then quickly moved to the next spot, but luckily it was only a couple minutes away, so I panicked for no reason. And here I took some of my favorites from this trip. I absolutely love these beautiful layers as they continue off into the distance, becoming more faded, more blue, and contrasting that very naturally against this orange red rock you know a pretty common cinematic look kind of that orange and teal and here it's happening in nature with these beautiful stacked layers going off into the distance and the sunset just really bringing out all these colors interestingly enough i often gravitate toward having people in my landscapes and as i mentioned earlier it does give a better representation of scale but i also think it just makes for a more interesting subject what kind of people are here to sit in the dirt when it's freezing cold to all look at the same thing so yeah even though there's a subject that most people are looking at sometimes i like to make those people the subject and while we were there there was a wedding photographer who's doing a bridal shoot and um, and we chatted for a short minute. And the wedding photographer in me, back when I was starting photography, could not at least take one photo of them. This was a really fun solo trip, and I look forward to traveling a lot more and doing more of these shoots. That's it for this video. Do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.